Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Constance Kasangaya for all of you guys that don't know me. And we go by the Connie K family here or the Connie K gang. And hi guys to my returning subscribers. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. And I hope that you guys have been keeping safe and healthy. And are very healthy, you know, with these conditions that are happening right now. I'm so sorry guys. Today I can't talk. I've just had a lot of things happening and finally I'm sitting down to film and I'm really happy about that. So I'm sure you guys have seen by the title of the video what we are going to be talking about today. I decided to make this video because I got a lot of uh, DMs from a lot of people when I was still working with Qatar Airways about what you would be required in your interview how you even apply and what you do so i decided that let me make this video for all of you guys because i still get um dms like that till till this day and i just decided that let me make a video for all of you guys that have these questions let me just put it in a video so that you guys can have something to reference back to so yeah guys stay tuned for the video okay so first i'm going to uh show you guys well i'm going to tell you guys how you can apply so unfortunately on this application that i'm move uh, that i'm using i don't know if any of you guys are editing your videos on imovie uh please let me know if there is a feature that you can actually use to um you know do voiceovers because honestly for me i've been trying to look and i can't find it and i'm not gonna lie i'm I'm very bad with technology i just know the basics and when it comes to these editing softwares yeah i don't i don't really know like i learned day by day but i genuinely looked i thought i saw it the other day but i didn't see it but i genuinely looked and i didn't find it so if any of you guys know please comment on the this on the comment section be below and let me know but i'm gonna explain it to you guys that even if you go to the sites for the airlines you will basically find it so if you want to apply to middle eastern airlines which will be qatar airways etihad and emirates the best way for you to apply that is the only way for you to apply not through with an agency or anything but you applying directly to the company is by going to their website and you keep scrolling down and you will see bars such as about us contact details you go under careers and then it will definitely have uh, subsections of depending on what you're looking for hospitality so maybe if you're a chef and you want to be a chef for the airline or if you want to be a hostess in like hostess in the airports or if you want you know depending on what kind of job you're looking for so even if you want a job in hr and the accounting department or whatever it will be uh, divided so obviously if you want to be in the ground handling um section i mean ground handling um uh you know part of the company or you want to be cabin crew you will see under cabin crew and then you will select and they will show you uh days that they will have opening days in your country so i know with qatar airways it's by invitation only and it's also open to the public so what you can do is you can take note of the dates that they will be coming to let's say johannesburg harare or wherever they're going to be going and depending on where you are and you can note that down and just keep checking that um site as time goes by or as the day approaches to see if the opening day is still scheduled and it's not cancelled and then if it's skills uh if it's still scheduled then you can definitely go but i know with emirates and Eth uh, Etihad airlines it's only by invitation only so you basically have to apply to go for that opening day so what will happen is the website will ask you uh, several questions and you need to answer and be as honest as you can and after that they will ask you to upload your cv and a picture of yourself which is a 
half length picture and a full body picture so the dress code that you're supposed to wear pictures i will let you guys know what it is because it's going to be the same dress code that you are going to wear when you go for the interview so once you've done that on their website you're going to receive an email from them it can take even two weeks or even longer because they will look at the cvs and they will see in their systems when they have uh because the system will ask you where you are located which country or which city are you in and they will notify you whenever they're coming to johannesburg or harare they'll send you an email email and let you know that we are having an we are having an open day in your country or in your city at this specific time and they'll tell you to print out the invitation so that when you get there you present it to them so they know that you are supposed to be there then sometimes they do give you options let's say you are in cities that they do not come to to hire people so they will like for example let's say you're in part elizabeth and they don't come to port elizabeth so they'll look at the nearest city that's to you and that will be cape town so they'll tell you come to cape town for an opening day or they'll give you an open uh, an open invitation which will tell you you have two options if you want cape town on this specific day or johannesburg on this specific day so depending on you and how you feel then definitely i would say if you are in that situation go to the cape town opening day because there's less competition because in Johannesburg the opening days tends to get crowded so yeah it's really hectic so yeah that's how you first um apply for the job and you wait for their uh you know feedback or you wait for their notification to let you know when you can come for an interview okay so now you have been invited for the interview and you're wondering to yourself what do i wear when i get there so basically what you need to wear when you get there is no bright colors no busy items like this top so basically guys as i said i don't have voiceovers so i'm going to put the items that you're supposed to wear after i have explained so that you guys can understand and see the vision of what i'm talking about so when it comes to makeup your makeup should basically be like this try not to do a lot of crazy um eye makeup so if you want you can do a wing liner but it should not be dramatic and if you want to do eyeshadow look definitely stick with your golds and your browns and your darker colors that bring out your eyes so your natural colors as i mentioned before gold and browns don't do like crazy pink and maroon honestly it's not gonna work for you but if you aren't really good in makeup and you have difficulties in let's say blending your eyeshadows and whatsoever then you can just be like me don't put any makeup just put mascara so definitely have a base if you are into foundation definitely put foundation on but don't let it be too cakey try to make it look as natural as possible and if you aren't into foundations then definitely try and put on a powder or a bb uh, bb cream and you know definitely your eyebrows should be done and you can put a little bit of highlighter but not so much so as you guys can see i only have lighter on highlighter on the bridge of my nose and on the sides but i and just on the inner eyes um yeah on the inner corner of my eyes just to brighten up my eyes and to make me look awake and i have mascara on the lower lash lower lashes and the upper lashes what am i saying what am i saying what am i doing oh my god so you guys you can see that I only have mascara on the upper eyes guys you can only see I have mascara right here and down here and a little bit of highlighter and I don't have anything here so obviously my contouring and my highlighting it's not so so bright it's so subtle and it's so natural so basically this is the look that you should go for and then when it comes to jewelry try to stay away from having too many rings if you are married or if you are engaged then just have your engagement ring or your wedding ring on and make sure that you wear a watch if you have one try and invest in a simple timepiece that is either gold or silver and then for earrings try wearing 
these two type of earrings that I have. So if you have two piercings, you can just go like this. If you have one piercing, then it's okay. You can just honestly just wear like pearls, the white ones, or just pearls the gold ones that is the only jewelry that you should have on you and then your hair you should wear a bun your hair so even if you have braids even if you have a weave on or a wig on or your natural hair make sure that you don't have any hair that is in your face comb brush everything to the back and roll it into a bun if you have a little net make sure that you put a net around your bun so that you don't have any flyaways. little and have actually a big thick uh, hairband that you put across as you guys will see in the video that I took after I've explained to you guys what you're supposed to wear so make sure that your hair is like that if you are gonna do your baby hairs definitely do your baby hairs so that your hair can look neat and also if you've got these hairs at the back that are like flying just try to find ways to tame them okay so now for the uh, attire you need to wear a black skirt so the black skirt has to be for your knee it should not be above your knee so your knees should not show when you are standing and you should wear some stockings as you guys will see on my video i didn't have stockings but wear stockings that are the color of your skin and obviously wear a pair of black heels but try to stay away from heels that are shiny or heels that have design on them and platform heels wear a short heel probably maybe this length or even shorter if you guys know the hush puppy heels then definitely try to go and invest in something like that and then wear a white plain collar shirt it can be long or short sleeve but i advise for guys to be long and for females to be short because they will ask you to take off your blazer which your blazer sh your blazer should also be black so they will ask you to remove your blazer because they will ask if you have any scars we will get into why they ask that a little bit later into the video so you need to make sure that you wear your um short sleeve shirt and a blazer and you are ready to go That's all you need nice clean and perfect so make sure that all your stuff are dry cleaned everything is ironed and everything is straight because presentation is what they look at as soon as you walk into the room before they even talk to you they have already looked at you because in this industry you need to understand you are going to be dealing with a lot of passengers or you're going to be dealing with people every single day that you get out of your house and you say you're going to work so presentation is very important besides that you are going to be representing their brand the moment that you wear that uniform you are qatar airways so when customers are coming they are coming to you because you're qatar airways so it's very important that you represent their brand and they look for people that represent your brand so for their brand so you need to make sure that you are looking amazing we are going to talk about the cv now so basically the qualifications that you need to become a cabin crew is with the middle eastern airlines you really do not need a cabin crew license but it is a plus if you are going to have a cabin crew license so the reason why i got a cabin crew license is because obviously if you are trying to apply with airlines in south africa sometimes you are required to have a cabin crew license and if you want to work with maybe private um airlines then definitely you need to have a cabin crew license or some sort of experience in the customer service industry so if you want to do that then definitely get a cabin crew license so that your options can be broader but if you want to apply for qatar airways emirates and etihad you don't even have to have a cabin crew license you just need to make sure that you have completed your high school education and pretty much that's it you apply for the job even though you don't have customer service experience um what they look at is when they are having an interview with you the way that you are communicating with them and the 
uh, people that are around you they look at that your communication skills and the way that you carry yourself and if you are a confident person these are things that they can see just by talking to you and just by the questions that they'll ans that they'll ask you in the interview so it's very important that um you are very confident when you get there don't be overconfident but be confident so in your cv it can be i mean if you have had any experience in the customer service industry then definitely that's a plus for you you can put that on if you've ha if you have any other qualifications definitely you can put that on but definitely uh when you are making your cv make sure that the first page of your cv the cover page you have a photo of yourself in formal wear so the same formal way that i explained to you guys and that you saw in the video is the same formal way that you're supposed to have on your cover page so your cv has been dropped and they have invited you for a drop off so what they'll do is after you have submitted your cv online and you got an invitation this is for qatar airways i'm gonna highlight this is for qatar airways once you have dropped your cv and they have told you that okay we're coming to johannesburg on saturday the 12th of april 2021 come through for an opening day that's not the opening day it's a CV drop off. So basically what they'll do is they'll have maybe over a thousand people and from a thousand people, they need to select only 500. So now you need to stand out. So basically what they'll do is you will get your turn, everyone to meet a recruiter and you will give her your CV. She'll look at your CV. So you have to go with your CV on the day for the interview because they don't have the CVs printed out. So she'll look at your CV and from your CV, she'll ask you a few questions. So from those questions that she asks you on that day, you need to answer them as, I mean, as good, as confident as you can. Like, I don't even know the words to choose. You need to answer them, you know, and as honest as you can, and you need to be confident. You need to make a first good impression and then she will tell you on the spot if you will be invited for an opening day which will be tomorrow so let's say you are invited for an opening day which will be the next day then that's going to be an whole day thing as well so make sure that you go with money with food with snacks so that you know that you're going to be there from eight o'clock until maybe 5 p.m so you are definitely going to be there the whole day so the first thing that they're going to do when you get there is they are going to explain to you the job what is expected of you they're going to give you a brief um uh, a brief background on qatar airways as the company where it started and where they are today and all the destinations that they fly to well not all the destinations but they'll give you a summary so that you know that these are the places that they fly to so it's very important that you have researched that airline before you go for the interview because sometimes you do get asked these questions and it would be really embarrassing for you to be in front of a recruiter and not know any destinations that these airlines fly to but you want to work for them so you really need to do research on the company so they'll do a brief presentation about the organization itself and they will give everyone an opportunity to introduce themselves so for me what they did uh, for some of the interviews that I went to opening days that I went to is that they will make you introduce yourself in front of everyone and there's 500 of you guys but you just have to say your name and where you are from and why you want to be a cabin crew and then you keep it moving so sometimes what they can do is plot twist they can say get to know the person that's sitting next to you and you will introduce them on their behalf that's uh you will get into group um activities so maybe they'll make you guys a group of four or a group of five and they'll give you guys a scenario that in aisle number 10 they are complaining that their tea is hot you know and they don't want to talk to that other cabin crew who served them they want to talk to you so how are you going to handle the situation with your team to make sure that this customer doesn't complain further and that there isn't any um conflict or altercation that can happen so basically what they'll be doing when you guys are having these discussions before you do the presentation is they're going to be walking around looking at each and every one of you guys how you interact with one another so basically they're trying to see if you're a team player if you are a leader 
or if you are a follower so the best advice i'd say be both make sure that you take chance or you take time to listen to someone else's idea and also voice out your ideas but don't be that person that's saying i'm going to be the leader of the group we're going to do one two three four five that's not going to work in your favor because in airline industry in situations we are encouraged to work as a team that is how everything uh, you know, make sure that at the end of the day, you guys have a smooth operation. So these are basically the things that they're going to look at. So after that, or before that, you guys will write an English test and a maths test. So basically what this maths test consists of, it's just simple maths, like four times five, five times four. They just want to know your basic knowledge. And then also in the English test, there's going to be an essay or a topic. So they'll give you a topic just just a random topic as to like why is the sky blue and they'll tell you write something about it in 500 words you know and then they'll give you scenarios that uh, they'll give you a case study so some papers is an essay and some papers is a um, case study so you guys will read on the case study like what is the case study about what is it saying and then you have questions that you need to answer at the end and then they'll take some time a break to mark that so obviously if you failed the case study then you're not going to the next round so literally everything is by round so the first round let's say is the group activities they see that you're not a team player. They know you by your numbers because you're allocated numbers when you arrive. They'll tell you number one, number two, number three, you didn't make it and you officially go home. And then if you make it to the next level, you do the English test and the meds test. And also by the meds test, it's really important that you know your time zones because you will be asked questions that right now in johannesburg it's let's say seven o'clock what time is it in philadelphia you have to know your time zones it's really really important as a cabin crew to know your time zones or as a person that's working in any in aviation to know your time zones because you are going to get a lot of customers that are going to randomly ask you hi we're in auckland right now what time is it in i don't know what time is it in Paraguay so you have you have to know you really really have to know so they will ask you these questions in the test so make sure that you take time to learn the time zones so that when you get there if you're asked any questions you have it at the tip of your mind after the test uh, they will call you into a room and they will have a lot of so I'm talking about my experience and some of the experience some of the uh, opening days aren't the same I'm not gonna talk for Emirates or for Etihad because I've only been there like quite a long time but some of the things were similar but I'm just gonna highlight more highlights more on Qatar Airways so what they'll do is they'll call you into a room and they will have a table that has a lot of items on it so maybe they'll have an orange they'll have an apple they'll have a chandelier or they'll have a lamp or like they'll just even have a laptop on there so they'll have a lot of things and they'll ask you to pick an item or even a book you pick an item and they're gonna ask you can you describe the item that you picked how it's linked to your personality like when they asked me that question i was like what do you what do you mean you know so you have to kind of like um you know explain why you gravitated to the item that you picked and why it matches with your personality so after that um they will go straight into the final interviews and honestly for the final interviews uh what i need to give you advice is some of these interview questions are not the same as the questions that you would get if you went for a normal interview so i know when i was working for bid air or when i was working for other companies that i worked for before i went to qatar airways for the interviews i was, uh, I was asked questions about myself so they asked me tell us about yourself so basically that question is not saying Tell us about yourself like i'm a bubbly person it's saying tell us about yourself in terms of your career you know from the time you got your qualifications and after that what did you do it's just basically a timeline that you need to summarize of what you've done 
from school until you are where you are today so some of the airlines and i know with Qatar Airways sometimes they don't ask you those questions they'll ask you what makes you smile if we had a scenario where you saw a co-worker let's say stealing something on board what are you going to do let's say we have a customer that's you know traveling with her kids how are you going to assist her what kind of a person are you i think i've highlighted what makes you happy uh they'll ask you just random questions hey questions that are so simple but they'll have you you know questioning yourself or like thinking what am I supposed to say? So one thing is when you are answering these questions, they are looking at your body language. So make sure that your body language is as open as possible. Try not to use your hands a lot. As I know that I'm a person who speaks with my hands. So every time, you know, I'm talking about something, I like to go and do this and this and that and this. Try to just put your hands maybe at the back or put them in the front and make sure they stay there. And try not to shake your head too much or to move around because they are looking at your body structure or your body language I mean because these are the things that are important when you are in front of customers and a customer asks you for information you have to be in a professional way and give them a professional answer you can't be like oh sir you're looking for the bathroom okay just go left right you know you can't do that you need to be like oh sir you're looking for the bathroom just go to your left and your right and you're done so basically that is what they'll be looking at okay guys that's gonna be the end of this video please let me know in the comments below if this video was very useful for all of you guys that are planning to apply to Qatar Airways, Etihad and Emirates and uh, I don't know if I explained it properly because I'm not really good at explaining things but I really really tried I hope that it made so much sense to you guys and that I was helpful or some sort of helpful to you guys and obviously uh, I can let me just be honest with you guys right now experience is different for other people uh, for me I did all these steps for all the interviews that I went to because before I went for the interviews I did my research and I honestly still did not get the job I only got the job like after trying several several times I'm sure you guys have seen this uh, from the story time that I did uh, about how I ended up getting my job with Qatar Airways so um, all I can just say is go there be yourself and do the best that you can and also follow these rules because they do help and some of these things are their requirements you will even see when you get an invitation they will tell you some of the things that you should wear and you shouldn't wear so guys I'm gonna end the video here thank you so much for staying this far if you guys have stayed this far and as I said before comments on the section below to let me know if this video was very useful to you all and i'm gonna try and link the descriptions um i'm gonna try and link the sites for the airlines in the description below so that you guys can visit them and see what is required from you before you can actually start applying so that on the day when you apply everything is good so don't forget to subscribe like comment and turn on the notification bell so that you guys can get notified every single time that I upload. And if you guys have any requests of any kind of videos that you guys would like me to film, feel free to DM me on Instagram or give me feedback. Feel free to do it on here as well in the uh, in the comments um, section below and i'll be really happy to take your advice and your video suggestions but until for now take care guys and make sure that you guys are healthy and safe bye